Toronto Pearson is Canada's largest airport, and one of the largest international airports in North America. And with the incredibly diverse population growth the Greater Toronto Region and really all of Southern Ontario is seeing, it's only going to see more passengers every single year. Probably making it one of the busiest airports bar none in North America over the next two decades. But the public transit offering at Pearson is lackluster to say the least. While there is a lot of transit serving the airport, the organization of it, the facilities the transit uses, and the way you connect between different transit services leaves a lot to be desired. At the same time, airports and the aviation industry need to dramatically cut their carbon emissions. And since doing it with planes is going to be tricky, things like reduced landside emissions for more public transportation access are a great idea. Most passengers don't currently get to Pearson on electric public transit, or really public transit of any type today, and that is not good. There's also the impact of cars. Right now, Pearson dedicates a ton of its land area to car storage and moving cars around. Even if it's regional gravity and really good location within the Greater Toronto Region could allow it to do more valuable things, like have retail, hotels, convention space, not to mention high-density office and logistics. If Pearson massively grows its public transit offerings, it can be more of a hub, more of a destination, and it can reallocate the space it currently uses for things like parking lots to things that actually create value for the airport, which could help bring airport improvement fees down and make flying out of Pearson more competitive. Now, I'd say the elephant in the room is that Pearson has poor rail links. And I shouldn't say links, I should just say link because there's only one. The Up Express isn't great for reasons I'll elaborate on later on, but it's also just one service. While major airports and even less major airports in other cities around the world offer more rail services, Pearson needs to actually do better because it's much more embedded in the urban fabric than say an airport like Heathrow that's quite far from central London. I was recently passing through Berlin Brandenburg Airport, an airport with half the passenger traffic of Pearson and whose greatest claim to fame is not being open yet. And yet, Berlin-Brandenburg has an order of magnitude more rail service than Pearson, and a train station that Pearson could only dream of. The truth is, for an airport the size of Pearson, there are multiple paths into the future. We could go the LAX direction with poor rail and public transit connectivity and be a miserable traveling experience, or we could go the direction of airports in places like Asia and Europe, where the public transit links are so good that people might go to the airport even if they're not flying. In short, the whole Union Station West idea that was floated before COVID, well, it was actually not a terrible idea, as corny as it sounded. Pearson and the communities around it need far better transit connections. So let's talk about how that could be done. As I've referenced before, Toronto Pearson needs better public transit, and a big part of bringing better public transit to Pearson is creating an integrated facility where transit can all connect. Now, I've drafted up a plan for a concept for such a facility, but the point of this video is more to just talk about the important issues and connections that should be made. Any new big transit station at Pearson, I've called mine Pearson Central Station, would be a huge investment, and so it's so important that with that investment we fix as many transit problems for Pearson as possible. Right now, trains and buses need to serve two terminals across several potential levels and they're linked together with a rather unpleasant cable-pulled people mover. As it turns out, there are already some regional journeys that are fastest made through Pearson Airport. But given the connection between the Airport Express train and the various bus services involves multiple escalators and quite a bit of walking, it's just not a great transfer experience. At the same time, Pearson isn't all that well equipped for people who are waiting to catch a train or a bus which is really a reflection of the poor airside experience at the airport in general for passengers who are waiting. Especially compared to an airport like, say, Vancouver, there just isn't a ton of seating or food options before you've gone through security. And that makes Pearson a less attractive place to connect on public transit, as well as for flights. Traveling by bus from most major airports is better than your typical city bus stop, because usually at least you're enclosed, though often by car ramps. The bus experience at Pearson, though, is pretty bad. You typically have to cross multiple lanes of traffic and you're left waiting out in the open, potentially freezing if it's wintertime. That's not to mention all of the exhaust fumes and noise from all of the cars and buses. The experience at Union Station or even Finch Station in North Toronto is far better than waiting for a bus at Pearson. 
And then there's the Up Express, which is the most basic, acceptable airport train service one could imagine. The trains aren't electric, instead they're powered by diesel, they're small, they're not super nice, they're kind of loud and they vibrate a lot, and they're too small for the amount of traffic they get. They only run four times an hour as well, which is decent frequency, but not great. We're still, the connection to the airport is a winding viaduct that at best feels like it's breaking the trains and at worst is just so painfully slow. It's a terrible introduction to Canada and makes all of our railways feel about as antiquated as they are. Something that personally bothers me a lot as well is that the Up Express stops running before all of the day's flights have landed, meaning that some passengers show up at the station and are told, well, you gotta get the bus. We need to do a lot better for rail to the country's biggest airport. So then how could we actually do that? My initial temptation was to try to site a big new public transit station between terminals 1 and 3, sort of around where the whole Spaghetti Junction is. The issue is the Spaghetti Junction makes building anything there extremely difficult, not only because you're going to have foundations, etc., but because you're going to have to do all kinds of crazy construction phasing as you move roads around. At the same time, while a location near the terminals is definitely better for passenger connections, it means linking in the various transit lines into the terminal become much, much harder. I can only imagine that it's for these reasons that the GTAA, the Greater Toronto Airports Authority, was thinking about putting the Regional Transit Centre near Viscount Station at the end of the current not-so-great automated people mover. But I have another location that I actually think I prefer. Placing Pearson Central Station here would put it closer to the Premier Terminal 1, as well as Eastern Concourses that will be added to it in the future. The site is also mostly parking today, there's less things to get in the way of construction, and the connections to transit lines that could be made here are much more natural. And because it's a large rectangular site, it just makes laying out an optimal station really quite nice. Ground level of the station would be a passenger pickup drop off. Not something super exciting, but it would allow people to catch a ride with family or friends as well as rideshare. And there would also be tons of space to potentially put something like, say, giant bike parkades, should Pearson want to improve its bike connections substantially in the future, which it should. On top of the ground floor level would be potential transit oriented development. The most boring form of this would be, I guess, hotels and maybe some convention space, but more interesting options could potentially happen, such as something like the Jewel at Changi Airport in Singapore, which is basically a giant nature themed mall, which is just a really cool contrast and nice environment to be in when you're about to get on a very long flight. Now going below ground, we get to everything interesting and transit oriented. The first level below ground would be for local bus services. Since they would probably be the most numerous and high intensity bus service servicing the station. There would actually be a second bus level for longer distance regional and intercity buses, but they would be placed below because they're a little less time sensitive. Passenger waiting area could be provided in the center of giant island platforms which would be surrounded by bus bays, and the entire area could be enclosed so you don't get the diesel exhaust fumes, though I would hope most buses would be electric by the time something like this gets built, and to keep out the cold weather in winter. Providing a ton of capacity for local bus services is important because there's a ton of room for better local bus service around the Pearson area, and the various industrial estates that surround it. Pearson Central Station would be a great transfer point. There's also lots of room for more intercity and regional bus services, connecting Canada's largest airport with cities across southern Ontario. And because Pearson has really good highway access, it might actually prove to be a better intercity bus terminal than something like downtown Toronto, which is quite constricted in terms of road capacity. Below the two bus levels would be a retail concourse level, which would be where retail, shops, and services that are more oriented towards traveling would be located. Things like luggage storage and quick food. You'd also probably want really large washrooms, potentially with showers as well, providing all of the amenities that travelers want on their long journeys. I should add that, of course, on every level of the terminal, you have tons of displays showing when the next departures are, so people don't feel a need to go to their departure level early if their bus is not for another 20 minutes, for example. The bottom level of the station would be for rail, with three giant island platforms that would be super wide and super high capacity, meaning that passengers getting on a train would just head to their platform and wait comfortably there, instead of having a union station situation where your platform number gets called and you have to rush down to the platform. 
Now the whole idea here is an underground rail station box similar to say at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport or Berlin Brandenburg. You'd have two giant island platforms for mainline trains, GO trains or intercity services, and then the last island platform could serve light rail trains. Now, a huge element of the transit service at Pearson is not just the facility at Pearson, but the connections from other transit arteries into Pearson itself. I think getting this right is really important because some of the worst elements of the transit to Pearson today are the winding roads and the winding rail viaduct into the airport that transit vehicles all have to take. For buses, there would be a new dedicated bus roundabout under Highway 427 linking directly into the bus levels of the facility. That would allow for direct ramps onto Highway 427, but an additional new 7km bus transitway alongside the highway would also mean high quality connections to Highway 401, the Mississauga Transitway, Rexdale Boulevard, and Dixon Road. There could even be a connection directly into the Woodbine site if that turns out to be a huge transit-oriented development. Busways could be built quite inexpensively along existing right-of-ways into the airport and it would mean a fast, easy, traffic-free connection from highways and other local routes into the airport facilities. And buses would be really important, connecting to York Region, Mississauga City Centre, Hamilton, and other cities around southern Ontario. For light rail, both the Eglinton Crosstown and Finch West light rail lines would be able to share the last island platform in the station box, with room to spare even with their longest possible 90 meter trains on both lines. Finch would be extended to the station site via a short extension from Woodbine along Carlingview Drive and then a short tunnel. Whereas Eglinton would extend from its planned terminus at the end of the Mississauga Transitway into a tunnel with a station at Silver Dart Drive directly into the terminal from the south. Connecting the light rail lines at the station this way would mean passengers essentially get an easy cross-platform transfer between the Finch West LRT and the Eglinton Crosstown LRT. Now people have suggested before that you might want to do through running between these lines, but because they use different trains and signaling technology, it's probably more trouble than it's worth, at least for a plan like this. The Finch and Eglinton LRTs would be a really important part of the transit offering at Pearson, because they would connect important destinations like Midtown Toronto, parts of Scarborough and Etobicoke, as well as Humber College and York University, which are obviously massive destinations. For heavy rail, things would be slightly more involved. But remember, costs don't need to be crazy because we're building a single station site. It's going to be an expensive station, but everything else is just basically uninterrupted tunnel. Coming from the east on the Kitchener Line, local tracks would dive into a tunnel between Martin Grove Road and Highway 27. They'd then turn into the station with a long, soft, gentle curve that would allow for high-speed service. To the west of the station, the tunnel would turn back north and travel under Airport Road, connecting back to the Kitchener Line just west of Malton Station, again allowing for much higher speeds than the current slow, sketchy viaduct. Now if you're curious, there are multiple reasons I wanted dual island platforms for regional and intercity trains at the station. For one, the dual platforms allow for longer dwell times, since each incoming track has two platforms it can serve, and that's useful when passengers have bags and they might otherwise hold up trains. Another benefit of having two platform faces for each track would mean that faster trains or trains that are delayed could more easily pass slower trains at the station this way. Now, the nice thing about this solution is it allows you to add a few more tunnels in different places that could add a lot of value to the operation. For example, an additional curve of track could be added here with a junction box near Orlando Drive. This would allow some via trains from Montreal and Ottawa to continue beyond Union Station to Pearson Airport and to continue back to Union Station without needing to turn around in the station, saving precious platform time. Finally, I'd add some additional tunnel spurs connecting to the tracks on the outer platform faces, allowing for a westward extension of rail service should a larger infield terminal eventually get built or if we want to extend rail service directly to Mississauga City Centre from the airport someday. Of course, this heavy rail infrastructure would allow connections into other cities, but also places across the Toronto region, from Kitchener and Brampton to Durham region and then all across the city of Toronto. Bringing all of this together would be excellent passenger circulation. There would be escalators from the retail concourse level, which would serve as the main interchange level, up to the three levels above it, meaning a direct escalator trip from either the pickup drop-off or either bus terminal level. There would also be direct escalators as well as elevators down to the train platform level, meaning you can make a trip between any bus and train route using just a maximum of two escalators or elevators. 
At the far western end of the retail concourse level, there would be the terminal access routes. There would be direct automated people mover connections underground to Terminal 1 as well as Terminal 3, and the tunnels would be constructed wider than usual so that there could be a pedestrian walkway adjacent to the APM tunnel, allowing people who want to get their steps in to do the roughly 10 minute walk to the terminal themselves. Well, all of this is just a concept for what a better transit situation at Pearson could look like, I think it's worth considering a few things here. For one, we need to start thinking about setting aside land and protecting forest station site. Pearson still has a number of fairly large open spaces where you could build a big transit station, but if we start building more parkades all over the place, it gets a lot harder to site a large transit facility. It also gets more expensive, and we have a real cost problem in Canada. We also need to make sure that any station plan allows the through running of train services. Not only does that allow for far more trains to serve the airport, but it also allows for more interesting uses, like intercity trains and trains to Kitchener-Waterloo. The great airports of the world all have excellent transit, and if Pearson and Toronto also want to be great, this is something we seriously need to think about. Thanks for watching.